Hi everybody, in this video we're going to talk about how to balance your new Lost Mandy mask. It's uh, Movember, so there's no shaving going on, it's a little bit chilly, I'm going to wear my, uh, my fleece here. Uh, of course it's covered in dog hair, we have dogs. Uh, and the first thing I want to show you is what does a balance mount look like? So this means uh, both in the RA axis, which rotates of course, and in the deck axis, which rotates in this direction, there's an equal amount of force that's required uh, on both sides. So I'm just gonna show that to you real quick on this setup. Uh, so here we have uh, basically the same amount of force. You can see as I move it to the side, both clutches are loose. Both sides are kind of more or less the same amount of effort to push it in one direction or the other. And then on the uh, deck axis here, which is this, this direction, you can see kind of more or less it's pretty close, uh, it's a little bit front heavy, but uh, again, a little bit of movement on each side kind of moves it in each direction. So our goal is to take your brand new mount and actually uh, make it balanced in both of these axes. I wanna talk for a moment about why a well-balanced mount is important. The first thing is that's the best way to get the best performance out of your mount. When the mount is balanced, the motors are not working hard to try to keep things in balance, they're working hard tracking and dealing with accuracy of your guiding and your pointing. So that's a good first thing. Second thing is your motors are less stressed, so they're not going to work as hard, they're gonna last longer. And again, it's you're getting the motors focused on the things that you want it to do, which is accuracy, and not dealing with things like trying to keep them out in balance. The third thing is you're going to avoid pure crashes. And a pure crash is when something happens and maybe your OTA slips and bangs into the side of it, it might damage your camera, it might damage your telescope, who knows. But uh, if you keep things in balance and that's your practice, uh, chances of you having a problem like that are gonna be far uh, less than if you just kind of leave it unbalanced. The last thing I wanna mention is you should never, ever, ever have your telescope mounted without uh, counterbalance. The possibility that something can get banged into it and sort of cause a pure crash is really, really high. So you always wanna make sure that you have some amount of counterbalance uh, when you have your telescope installed. So let's go ahead and get to how to balance your Lost Mady mount. So I wanna talk for a moment about the basic approach to counterbalance. Obviously, you're gonna use counterbalance weights on the counterbalance shaft. And the idea is that, again, we have equal force uh, compared to the telescope side of things. And the basic approach is that you have kind of a two-part uh, strategy for dealing with these counterweights. The first is you have your primary counterbalance, and this is usually as far up the counterbalance shaft as you can, and then you have a secondary piece, which is a, a fine tuning. Now, there's gonna be a lot of variability, of course. Lots of different scopes have different weights. You might have different types of weights. If you end up with only one weight, that's okay too. Uh, you probably, you know, the primary and your uh, kind of refined or uh, fine tuning of the weight is gonna be the same thing. But generally speaking, you want the majority of your counterbalance further up the shaft. And that's an important concept that we're gonna be using here in counterbalancing uh, this mount. So to get started, the first thing that we need is we need our telescope fully configured. And that means that whatever equipment you're gonna be using, whether it's a focuser, a rotator, obviously a camera, if you have any gear that's on top, it's a position there. The uh, protective uh, front cover you're gonna take off. Essentially, we want this to be exactly what we're gonna be shooting with because this is the thing that we're gonna be balancing. Second thing is we're gonna have nearby is our extra counterweights of various sizes. You probably won't have th this many in the, in the variety, but you know all the counterweights you think you need are gonna to need to be close by and kind of handy. We have the counterweight shaft uh, safety screw that's right here. We've taken this off and we're not gonna use this till the very end. And then one other thing that I like to use is a little bit of tape, and you'll see later this is gonna allow us to set up uh, and repeat where we actually slide the telescope in on the uh, saddle plate. So the mount itself needs to be pretty much set up and ready to go. And by that I mean your tripod legs are out and that your tripod is level. Your uh, RA and deck axes are connected and assembled and they're all tight. Um, it doesn't matter so much about the Gemini unit. We're not gonna use power or the Gemini to do the balancing, so that's less critical. Uh, we have our counterweight shaft uh, attached, and of course our counterweight shaft safety screw is off. We have a little bit of counterweight, and I'm starting with the largest one here, uh, but it's slid uh, kind of further up. And again, this is gonna be our starting point. We never wanna start with no counterweight on here. 
And then the last piece is on the um, saddle plate itself. What we have is uh, the dual saddle plate and we want to actually loosen both of these. Not so much that they're going to fall out, but we're about to slide the scope in, so we want to make sure that they are both loose and that we can put it on. If you plan to go directly from balancing your mount into polar alignment and possible model building or visual observing, whatever, uh, there's a few additional things you're going to want to do here. The first is you're going to want to make sure that this leg on the front is basically pointing north, uh, because that's a very important part of polar alignment. Second thing is you're going to want to make sure that the altitude uh, setting is roughly uh, where you are on your latitude. And we're not going to cover that here, but we are going to uh, talk about it later on in the polar alignment phase. But you kind of want it roughly roughed in at this point. The first thing we're going to do is put the telescope on the mount. And again, what's important is we have both of these uh, loosened. Now, when we put the telescope on the mount, uh, generally you're going to try to aim for it to be somewhat in the middle of the balance. With a telescope like this, this is a Ritchie Cretien, it's a uh, reflector telescope, so majority of the weight's gonna be in the back. It's got a big mirror here, it's got a bunch of gear here, so it's gonna tend to be back heavy. I'm gonna kinda wanna push it forward. If you have a refractor, which is all glass elements, uh, those tend to be a little bit heavier on the front or maybe a little bit more balanced, so you're probably gonna aim for something that's a little bit more uh, in between or maybe where the back is a little bit further back. Again, this, this phase is not super critical in terms of where you put it on, but you just don't want it to be wildly out of balance. So we're gonna take this. Unfortunately, this is a carbon fiber tube, so it's not too heavy. We're gonna slide this in to the D plate here. And I am gonna guess, because this is so heavy on the back here, put it right about here. And what I'm gonna do is on these two uh, bolts, I'm actually just gonna use just one of them for now. Uh, and the reason why is because we're gonna be doing some balancing still, so eventually we're gonna tighten both of them down, but for now I'm just gonna be using one. So therefore, you wanna make sure it's tight enough that you know it's gonna be secure, but not so tight that it's gonna be hard to get it uh, undone. So now that I have a rough idea of what the right counterbalance is, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this so it's parallel to the ground. My deck axis is still locked, which is important. And I can see that this is still super heavy. So what the approach I like to use is rather than kind of move it up and move it up and move it up and see where it is, I like to kind of go all the way up and then kind of uh, find my spot by going back and forth rather than try to creep up on it. So what I'm gonna do, and again, I'm holding this so I don't want this thing to flop over if something goes uh, crazy on the weight. So I'm gonna lock this down about here. So is this, that well, looks closer. So, I think this is actually, uh, it's pretty close, but what I want to do is I want to keep as this weight as high up the shaft as I can. So I'm going to go ahead and move this up a little further. Now I have to still keep some room in here because I have to undo the deck clutch, so I'm not jamming it all the way up there. But I'm putting it higher up as I can. And again, being mindful that I'm always ready to grab this if something starts moving. So I'm going to try that. Yeah, and it seems uh, pretty close. Now at this point, things are gonna get a little bit sticky. So what I wanna check, first of all, again, make sure these are all uh, really solid on there because we don't have the uh, safety pin, so I'm gonna flip this around and I don't want it to fly out and hit my foot. So I'm gonna move this around, check the other side. One of the things I've noticed is uh, usually one side of the mount is uh, less sticky and more uh, freely moving than the other, and it seems like this side actually is, is it. So, I'm pretty close to where I think I'm gonna be. I mean, it's, uh, I'm just kind of giving it equal pushes on both sides here, and it seems pretty close. Now, just to check that, I'm gonna move this down a little bit. Yep, so, so it's, not, it's not just me kind of convincing myself here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just move this back up. That seems, to, that way it moves a little bit more. So it's somewhere in between those two. So you notice the majority, again, the majority of my counterweight here is all the way up, and it's providing the bulk of this, and now this is just the fine-tuning piece that it's working. So, again, I'm feeling the amount of force that I need to do here. This looks pretty good. So I like to, again, check the other side just to make sure. See, it'd probably be a little bit more sticky, but do I feel like this is unusually out of balance? And again, it seems pretty good. Try this again.
Yeah, so I would say, I'd say this is pretty much in balance uh, on the RA. So now we're gonna move uh, to the deck axis. And so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna come around here, and what I like to do is I like to keep my RA axis a little bit loose because there's a, there's a little bit of an iterative approach. It's different for the deck axis, but it requires moving of the RA over and over. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to, before I move this, double check these weights are good, right? Because we don't want them to fall out. I'm gonna loosen the deck axis. And again, I'm holding the telescope while we're doing this. Now I find trying to hold the front of it to be real helpful. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate this so it's parallel to the ground and then just a little bit past that and it actually loosens the deck. And the deck is actually much easier, it moves much more freely, but you can see here that the front is too heavy. So while both axes are uh, loose, both of the clutches, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna loosen this back one. I'm keeping my hand on the back of the telescope. So if you loosen this, go slowly, and when it starts to move, be prepared to catch it with your hand. So I'm gonna move this, and I'm just gonna kind of slide it down a bit. Again, I like to go past where I think it is so that I can kind of know where the middle might be. And again, both of these clutches are loose, so I wanna be careful, I wanna hold on to these. So I'm gonna move this. It's gonna go past down. So it seems like it's a little bit back heavy. All right, so I'm gonna again go back. I'm gonna move it forward a little bit. Now this is just an iterative approach, so you, know, you can spend some time and get it as close as you want. Uh, for anything that has a spring-loaded worms, which are all the new mounts uh, as of this video, you want to have these balanced uh, perfectly. You don't need to, to bias the balance one way or another. If you find for some reason you can't get it perfectly balanced, one of the things you can do is have uh, the deck axis a little bit camera heavy and the RA axis a little bit east heavy. So that means it's, uh, in this case, it was like this. It would be uh, this side that would be a little bit heavier. But we're gonna aim for the ideal and sort of perfect balance. So I'm gonna loosen this. Again, I got my hand here. I'm gonna tighten this up a bit. Swing this around. Still a little bit back heavy. Okay, a little bit, so now we're a little bit front heavy. We're pretty close. So I'm gonna give it one more tweak. Okay, and at this point I'm probably gonna also tighten my secondary as well. So both of these are connected. Now if you happen to have a telescope that's uh, really, really light or really, really, um, back heavy, and you push this past so only one of these connect, that's okay. That's actually what this is designed for. So you can use just the front or the back, uh, but if, you, if, you, if the saddle plate is in both of them, we're actually gonna wanna use both of them, but it's in just the top one, then you can use that as well. So let's just take one last look. Yeah, I think I'm okay with that. I know it's a little bit front heavy. I might tune it up a little bit later. But that's essentially what we're looking for, right? The same amount of effort uh, goes on both ways there. So I think I'm pretty much balanced here. I'm gonna go ahead and move this up. I'm gonna tighten down my clutches. Okay, both RA and deck. There we go, make sure they're tight. I'm gonna attach my safety bolt here so that it stops the uh, counterweights from flying off. And there we go, it's uh, balanced. One thing I like to do to make putting this back on repeatable is I like to use a piece of tape. And um, this is just some colored paper tape. So what I'll do here is because um, the front uh, or the, the rear of this uh, plate and dovetail don't line up, and uh, I would normally tape kind of where the, the end of the dovetail is, but unfortunately the screw is in, in the way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this piece of tape and I'm going to actually put it on both the saddle plate and the dovetail. And I'm gonna take a knife here and I'm gonna cut this. 
So now I have an alignment point of where I know this thing slides on. So for example, next time I'm doing this, if I loosen all this up and I'm pushing it back on, I see that I can actually get it exactly where it needs to be with a little bit of effort. Here are a few additional tips on how to balance your mount. The first is if you find your RA is sticky, like it's not moving very well, first thing I point out is that one side is usually less sticky than the other. So I will always try one side, see how it works, and then I'll switch around and do the other side. And sometimes I'll even do both. So even though I know this side is a little bit uh, stickier, I still just want to double check as a sanity check to make sure that this is not out of balance, obviously. But in this case, this side seems to be a little bit less sticky. So this is probably where I'm going to do majority of my work. The second thing is if you find that that's still sticky and you want to uh, free it up a little bit more, I'm going to lock this uh, clutch here. I'm going to come around here and what you can do is you can lower the altitude to the lowest it can go so that the mount is essentially kind of, or the telescope is parallel uh, to the ground. So now that it's at the lowest altitude uh, that's available on the mount, and every mount's going to be a little bit different, I'm going to go ahead and loosen the clutch. And we're going to check both sides. And you can see that this, uh, this moves quite freely. And on this side, again, a little bit stickier, but I can tell that it's moving a little bit more freely. So that's a great way to do it. Now, again, it's a bit of a pain in the butt because you have to reset your altitude after you balance, but that's okay because you really only need to balance it once. And then you can kind of mark off maybe where these uh, weights are for repeatability. So the last tip deals with very, very light uh, telescopes. In fact, you might even be using a DSLR and a DSLR lens, in which case you may not even be using any counterweight at all. You can use just the counterweight shaft as the counterbalance. If you find that even just the counterbalance shaft is too much weight, we do have a short version of the counterbalance shaft. It's the same as the previous one, it's just uh, half the length. And a lot of times this is just the amount of counterbalance you need to uh, balance your extremely light telescope setup. So that's how to balance your Lost Mandy mount. I don't want you to stress too much about perfecting the balance because with the spring-loaded worm, it really does a great job of, as long as you're close to uh, balance, it's gonna do a great job of performing and everything. But, you know, you know how to do it now, so hopefully you can get it really, really close. In the next tutorial, we're gonna talk about how to finish the setup and do polar aligning of your telescope.